this thing smells really nice. Nevertheless, there is nothing nicer than new stuff from China. Yep, and late to sniff it. Nevertheless, what are we actually going to get? Oh, my camera had some zooming issues or focusing issues. Nevertheless, we're going to get a very interesting overall layout. Not my favorite one. I'm more the fan of the D-pad on the left top corner, but it's because I'm a D-pad guy. But the D-pad, let's talk about that first because the feel does feel okay, a little bit clickish. But not like super bad. We're going to get very tiny A, B, and X and Y buttons. And they feel okay. They have a very nice long travel to it. Then we're going to get ourselves the Nintendo Switch clone joysticks with the click. But what is interesting with the layout is the following thing. At the side we're going to get ourselves a select the start. And it's quite interesting that we also have the volume control over here. That is something I've never seen before. At the bottom part we're going to get two TF slots. One for the OS and another one for the gains. But take consideration they are most of the time using these very strange brands or like non-brands at all. I think this is an overall problem. Simply because these things can get corrupted fairly easy. It's always like recommended making a backup of these things. And then of course we're going to get ourselves two speakers here at the bottom. They don't sound like, let's say, really loud, but when you're listening to it, they sound quite nice when it comes to the middle and the high sounds. Okay, then we're going to get ourselves the reset over here. If you have any problems, you can reset the system fairly easy. As you can still remember with the first generation of handhelds, you always select this tiny button that you can use a pen for or a tool. Then, of course, we're going to get shoulder buttons and the trigger button. But the trigger and shoulder buttons, that's something we need to talk about. The unlock switch, we're going to get two type C's, one for charging and one for adding a controller and HDMI out. But I think it's pretty damn cool. The HDMI out is in, in this machine itself because this is an absolutely cool extra feature. So when you're looking at the device itself, the one of the cool features, of course, the HDMI. And when you're going to combine it with a controller, you're actually just going to have like a game system. And some of the super console that you can buy are even weaker than this device itself, so far I understand. So it's quite cool, to be honest. So now we have a plug and play device they can bring with you, grab a controller. They have just like a game system they can play together or alone. The first thing that we need to do is set it up because with Emi Alec it will for ask you to configure the controller pad. This one, this means shown as the Xbox 360. Let's navigate through this menu by configuring everything, the D-pad, the analog sticks, and everything that we're going to need. So we're pressing, you can choose A or B, it's all up to you. I'm just following the buttons on the patterns on the controller. Then we have the left shoulder button, right, the triggers, the left thumbs, and then up, down, left, right, up, down, left, right. And the hotkey will be this particular one. That's it. And we're ready to go and ready to play some freaking games. So as you can see over here, everything works just fine. Plug and play. Audio will be transmitted. Oh, and I need to find my freaking buttons. There we go. And we can just play your games on the television. So maybe you're already noticing that I'm actually player two. We can add the credits, but so far I have seen with the configuration, I couldn't get out of the menu. I need to use the original handheld for that. Here you can see like my controller play was player one. So, but if you want to go back to the main menu, so what you need to do is going to the controller and Bluetooth settings in here. We can check controller mapping and here we can reset everything. If you have any problems like I had in the beginning. Another setting that is very convenient. So here we have all of the different players that you can implement. Here you can check out the Z joystick. The Xbox controller that we just configured. Let's say I want to put this on player one and have the handheld on player two. You can just mess around with it and force it basically saying, hey, this controller is basically for this position or this player. And of course the headphone for the people who really love to use headphones for on the go. But the shoulder buttons, there we're going to get micro switches. There is no analog, let's say, triggers on this device. We're going to get ourselves like two micro switch ones. It's not bad at all, but if you want to have an analog one, yep, you're out of luck. First of all, at the front, we're going to get ourselves like a very reflective like screen, uh, let's say screen protector, or at least like a front glass. And I can tell you, oh man, there's a nightmare to freaking film. But let's power on the device itself. Which one is powering on? There it is. And let's take a close look at the display itself because Pow Kitty did an amazing job. The display itself looks absolutely amazing with this resolution of 1280 by 720. It is an IPS panel, some say an RGB IPS, but 
I don't know if the camera will do this thing justice, but when you're looking at it in real life, man, this thing is absolutely beautiful. A stunning, stunning display, I can tell you. But what can we actually play with this device? So first of all, this thing runs on Emulic 4.5. What I love about Emulic is that we're going to get ourselves like absolutely a lot of great options if you want to swap with emulators or you want to mess with settings or make a quick load and quick save. So it comes with the rock chip, this device itself, but yeah, the downside is that this thing is not powerful enough to run full like say speed even <laughs> when it comes to let's say playstation portable god of war so those things you need to take consideration it's a cortex a55 um, with the mali g52 gpu so an overall not bad specifications but when it comes to overall performance two-dimensional stuff will run just fine but when you're looking at n64 there are going to face some problems that we have mixed performance with some games nevertheless let's get into the games and let's take a closer look what we can actually play with this because there is a lot of cool stuff you can play but next up, there are a lot of devices that you can play PlayStation 1 now. But when it comes to this, there is no upscaling possible because it's not powerful enough. Next up, let's take a close look at some PlayStation Portable. But the reason I choose to pick a two-dimensional game, and shmup in this case, I just wanted to showcase that we actually have some games that run okay on this that we can just enjoy. I still find it a little bit too slow, but it is playable to a certain point. So next up I just wanted to showcase a game and this is meant on the many that don't run perfectly on this and that is of course Gruz on the USA. It's basically my test bench game that I just wanted to cherry out and, and most of the time with these cheap handhelds they don't work really great to the point that it is freaking, freaking unplayable. But for N64 I just wanted to showcase a different game, one of the launch titles that most of the time run okay. You can hear that it stutters. But even on low resolution, this looks absolutely amazing. It's very comfortable to play. And this is absolutely an analog game, or analog stick game. Where the freaking hell is my turbo? Did I just mess up the... Yep. But if you're searching a device that can play all kinds of 8-bit, 16-bit stuff, this is absolutely a really cool machine. It's very comfortable when it comes to just some two-dimensional stuff. Especially because of the form factor and the beautiful display. It's mixed out, like say, stretched up. Another feature I really like is the audio. Because the audio already mentioned in the beginning, it's not super loud, but it is very clear. Especially when it is in the mid and high. But not to the point that it's going to be super high pitched. The only thing I need to get used to is that freaking D-pad. Simply because the inputs are not that great. And the long travel. And it feels quite sturdy when it comes to touch. But if you just want to mess around, you make a quick save, uh, stuff like that, that works pretty damn good. So the overall performance when it comes to, let's say, two-dimensional stuff, yeah, I like it. <laughs> 